Hey St. Michael's, this is Father Michael here. I hope you've had the opportunity to watch the video that Archbishop Aitchin came out with on Wednesday, telling us that he's decided to cancel all public liturgies and public masses in the Archdiocese of Seattle due to the COVID-19 outbreak. If you're like me, it might have been a little bit of a surprise to you. It might have been a little bit of a shock. I can tell you that in these last couple of days, I've just been carrying around a sense of almost grieving, just uh, just wondering what this means and just feeling surprised and bewildered by the whole thing. At the same time, I can tell you I support the Archbishop's decision, and I think that he's looking out for all of us and our safety. First of all, looking out for all of the people in our community and in our families who are going to be vulnerable to this all of our parents and our grandparents. The secondly is looking out for the healthcare system and the healthcare workers. Uh, as an epidemiologist told me, one of the biggest problems that this virus could present is that everybody gets sick at the same time. And so even though it's likely that a lot of us will eventually have the sickness, if we can just spread out the transmission of the sickness so that everybody doesn't get sick at the same time, it's going to make it so that our healthcare workers can take care of people who get it and give them attention without being overwhelmed, without leaving people in waiting rooms and panicking and not knowing what to do and trying to figure things out. And so, uh, so the Archbishop has his, our best interests at heart in making this decision, and I'm sure he did not make it lightly, and, uh, and certainly it's not a light decision to make. Even though we won't be having public Mass here at St. Michael's, I want you all to, to know that doesn't mean Mass doesn't continue. I'm going to be saying Mass for you. I've been saying Mass for you every day, and that includes on Sundays. You know, the Mass is above all Jesus offering himself on behalf of each of us, and that's going to continue. I've got you all in my prayers. I'm praying for you. I'm offering up the Mass for you, and in the prayer of Jesus, we're all united. That's what brings us together. So just know, even if we can't all be together for it, even if it can't be open to the public, Mass will continue, and, uh, and you're continually held in prayer. That being said, I do want to tell you what still is available to you here at the parish. We're going to be continuing with adoration. Adoration is going to be going from 9 a.m. until midnight on Mondays and Fridays. In addition, I'm going to add some adoration time on Wednesday nights in place of our normal Wednesday night Mass. So on Wednesdays, we'll have adoration from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m., and so I invite everyone to come and, and take part in that. Confessions are going to continue. Confessions normally are at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, during Lent at 7 p.m. on Friday, and at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Those are all going to continue. I'm going to add another confession time just because we're putting in those adoration hours. Uh, I'm going to come back to the confessional at 9 p.m. on Wednesdays. So on Wednesdays, I'll offer confessions at 5 p.m. until people are done, and then from 9 p.m. until people are done. So you're welcome to come in and be a part of that. Additionally, for anyone who's truly deathly ill, for anyone who is in danger of death, really, even if it's uh, just, um, there's, it could be in the next few days or weeks, uh, I am going to continue bringing the sacrament of anointing of the sick and bringing communion to those people. And so if there's anyone in our parish that you know of who's in danger of death in any way, don't hesitate to contact the office, uh, give us a call. If someone is in danger of dying within the next 24 hours, please call the emergency line and I will make it my utmost priority to make sure that they receive those sacraments. Lastly, the church is going to remain open from business hours, so from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, in order for you all to have the opportunity to come in, spend some time with Jesus in prayer. People still have a lot of questions. You might, uh, you might be wondering, well, when am I going to be able to receive communion? You know, what about uh, what's going to happen with Easter Masses? What's going to happen with Confirmation Mass? I don't have any answers for you at this time. Uh, I'm sorry to say. I'm hoping that we start getting more directives on those things soon. Uh, as of yet, nothing has been said, and so I really have nothing that I can pass on to you about that. In terms of people wanting to receive communion, that's a good desire. It's a holy desire, and I want to be able to answer that and respond to that. As of right now, I haven't uh, come up with sort of what would be best for our parish and our situation as a way to offer that. Um, I'm probably going to need a little bit more time to think things through and to discuss that with staff and also with other priests to make sure that we have everything lined up, lined up to be able to do that in a good way. But just so you know, I'm thinking about it, and I want to sort of uh, make that available and possible for people as soon as possible. In the meantime, 
Uh, coming up this weekend, we won't be having Mass on Sundays together. Uh, like I said, I will be offering Mass for you, but we won't be coming together. The Archbishop has given us dispensation from attending Masses on Sundays. But at the same time, we also know that it's one of the commandments to keep holy the Sabbath. And that commandment remains. So even if we can't be at Mass, uh, the Lord still asks us to take a Sabbath to enter into his life, enter into his rest. And in light of that, I want to offer some materials and some uh, media for all of you to be able to access so that you can pray at home, whether that's alone, whether it's with your spouse. If you've got a family, it'd be good for your whole family to get together and pray together. I think there's uh, some great opportunities here for you to share readings from the Bible, to share prayer together. And uh, I know a lot of people, they just might be thinking, well, I just don't know what to do. What do we do? Where do we start? I'm going to work on trying to get some things out to all of you so that you can uh, still make the Sabbath holy, you know, still celebrate Sunday, even if we can't celebrate it together. So be on the lookout for that. With that in mind, uh, I'd also ask you for three things. First of all, like us on Facebook. We've been putting up stuff on and keeping everything updated on that, and we'll continue to put out materials on that. Secondly, if we don't have your email address, please either call the office or send us an e email so that we can include you in our emails updates, which we'll be continuing to send out. Uh, also, please check us on our website. So, uh, we're going to be putting stuff up on our website on a regular basis, I, I anticipate, and uh, so keep up there for news and also for uh, some of the materials we'll be using if we uh, have documents or things that, uh, that can help you with your prayer. Lastly, we have the opportunity to recognize in this time without being able to attend Mass like we normally would be able to, we're in solidarity with a lot of our brothers and sisters around the world who for many different reasons, whether it be from war, persecution, simply distance, haven't been able to celebrate Mass in long time. And uh, even though we feel that pain, we know that uh, we're also never alone. In prayer, we're never alone, no matter what that prayer is. And we have the opportunity to, uh, to remember all those people who have lived without this and, uh, and pray for them and ask that God would strengthen us like he's strengthened so many of them in times of trial. And then finally, in not necessarily being able to receive the Eucharist like we normally would too, we also should just recognize our solidarity with all our brothers and sisters who can't receive the Eucharist for one reason or another, whether it be because of some sin they carry around or some kind of marriage situation or uh, even our brothers and sisters who are Christian but not united with us in the faith. That uh, in some way, this distance that we feel from the Lord um, we're not alone in it. We carry it with others, and we have the opportunity to, uh, to turn to the Lord together with all of those people and uh, recognize that every single one of us is in need. Every single one of us is just looking to God, and we need God's grace, and uh, we all need God's grace together. And so as we go forward, as we continue to try to figure out how to deal with this situation and with this virus, I want you to, uh, first of all, just... I ask for your prayers. Please pray for me and all my brother priests as we struggle to try to figure out how can we, we best take care of all of you. And then uh, beyond that, just know I'm praying for you. And if I can do anything for you in any way, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm thinking of you. Love you all. You're in my heart. And God bless you. I look forward to uh, being in touch. Take care.